Utah Phillips said, the earth is not dying, it's being killed. And the people who are killing it have names and addresses. For me, Utah Phillips embodies the spirit of El Jefe and the spirit of the Santa Ritas, rugged and handsome and independent and wild. Ruta de Jefe is a adventure cycling race around the Santa Rita Mountains following uh, dirt roads. The Santa Rita Mountains are the lair of El Jefe, one of the only remaining jaguars in the U.S. My name is Sarah Swallow and I'm a professional adventure cyclist, uh, route maker, and I'm the creator of Ruta del Jefe. <laughs> El Jefe, the name means the boss. I thought that was fitting for this particular course, which is 125 miles and 8,500 feet of climbing. When I first started coming down here, I realized that this place was just a mecca for cycling. And as I got to know it more, I started to realize that there's also a lot of other stuff going on. It's like one of the most biodiverse places in the world and it's also the center of like our political crisis along the border. So there's the humanitarian crisis and there's also a lot of threats to the environment itself through mining. Ruta del Jefe brings together a community of cyclists to uh, learn about the issues and uh, experience it firsthand in one day. border issues, whenever we're talking about border security, we have to talk about the actual land. Uh, we have to acknowledge that our border is one of the most breathtaking landscapes in the country um, and that uh, the species that live here are, are imperiled and they're also incredible. Um, so whenever we talk about border issues, I think we, we, we owe it to the land to talk about the beauty, the remoteness, um, and the incredible wildlife that lives here. The borderlands are the most biodiverse region in all of North America. So it's one of the only places in the world where we see jaguars and black bears living in the same place. So there are all these really unique habitats that absolutely need our protection um, that are seriously imperiled uh, by border wall and by border militarization plans right now. There are lots of issues that are facing you know, public land uh, in, in conservation and preservation, but in southern Arizona, they all come together within a really short geographical area. It's a crossroads of sorts of both issues and landscapes. And one of the things that makes the Patagonia region very special is that you have four completely different ecosystems that come together right there in that spot. You have the border, you have critically endangered habitats for things like jaguars and ocelots. You also have awesome, like on an astronomical scale, mineral development that's happening. You have water issues. And so these are, I think, national issues that are all condensed in, into one little zone. It's overwhelming, but I think that's a good thing. And I think that events that bring people together uh, in special landscapes and then bring these issues to light help people uh, grow in a really positive way. And then if you have the opportunity to ride through them, it gives you a chance to think about it when you're out there for hours and hours at a time. This is an important conversation to have and an important part of consciousness uh, that we should all be immersing ourselves. Through riding here, I've, I guess I've experienced like almost everything that you can experience as like a, a hu human traveling under your own power. One of the most powerful experiences was actually 
meeting two migrants who were traveling through and just seeing how desperate they were and how they didn't have any water or food. And being faced with that question of like, that this, this act of giving them aid is being criminalized and it, it just just is so mind-boggling. No More Deaths is a humanitarian aid nonprofit organization that drops water throughout the, the region for undocumented immigrants. There are lots of people dying in the desert and it's not necessarily something that everybody wants to think about or talk about, but it needs, it needs to be addressed. The southern Arizona borderlands uh, contain these really vast wildernesses that people cross on foot when they're traveling from Mexico into the U.S. and they're undocumented. And people were pushed into these areas in the mid-90s when checkpoints were installed on highways and really small sections of wall were built in cities, so it forced people to walk for like weeks at a time, sometimes through the desert to get around these checkpoints. And it was called Prevention Through Deterrence. And the idea was, if we just make the desert deadly, people won't cross, which isn't true. So people still cross, but instead they just started dying. Border Patrol's own numbers say that from 1998 to 2018, there were 7,000 sets of human remains found in the U.S. borderlands. And those are Border Patrol's own numbers. But since Trump was elected, there's been an escalation of criminalization of humanitarian aid. So people doing humanitarian aid are starting to be arrested and facing charges. Last year, nine humanitarian aid volunteers were charged with criminal offenses doing humanitarian aid. One of the volunteers, he was arrested and charged with two felonies because he was seen giving food and water to migrants. So he's being charged with harboring and is facing 20 years in prison. <laughs> um, and his trial starts May 1st. When it comes to migrants, Border Patrol can act with impunity. Like when people are taken into detention, they don't have the same rights as when someone is taken to jail. Border Patrol has no accountability. They can do whatever they want. <laughs>
You know, I've got a Prius out there and it has more copper in it than, you know, I'd probably find in, a, you know, a tabletop mosaic of pennies. But what we are opposed to is a open pit mine a mile across and half a mile deep in one of the most beautiful parts of the Santa Rita Mountains. Imagine the Arizona Trail. Where that trail is, is going to be a big, ugly, open pit mine. Conservation can't exist without recreation. The greatest number of outdoor advocates are those who use the landscape by cycling on it, or by running on it, or by hiking on it. And you know, we breathe the dirt, and we feel the cactus spines, and we connect with the land in a really amazing way. Landscapes are always threatened. Uh, and when we talk about natural resources, a lot of us are looking through very different lenses. So if you talk to a mountain biker about natural resources, we're concerned about, uh, say, access and open space and the preservation of the landscape itself. If you talk to somebody who's, say, uh, interested in extractive resources like mining, they're very interested in natural resources as well, but for a very different reason. And I feel like as populations grow, and as places like Arizona, which is very mineral rich and also uh, has very sensitive ecosystems, that these issues come up over and over and over again. And they're important conversations to have, uh, especially because we have to all learn how to get along and how to get the most from the resources, but also convincing land managers that recreation and conservation should be priorities. Because for the past hundred and some years, they haven't been. How many more areas can we lose before we start to lose the landscape as a whole? And I think that's where like working on the Arizona Trail has been an incredible project because preserving the entire trail also helps preserve the entire corridor and eventually kind of preserves like the entire landscape. I think recreation and, and conservation of landscapes needs to be made a priority. There's something about traveling on a bicycle and engaging with people at the same time, it, it disarms people. And so you can engage with people in a certain way that kind of diminishes a gap that most of us like perceive is there. It's a really unique way of being able to connect with people and also connect with the land that you're in. I hope to raise awareness to the issues in this area through cycling. I think that on a bicycle, we're traveling at a certain rate of speed that we can be immersed in our environment so we can have a more sympathetic perspective towards these humanitarian and also mining and environmental issues and help to hopefully conserve these places and to help the issues at hand. First and foremost, uh, we have to understand that all of this is stolen indigenous land. And the very concept of borders, I think, necessitates a historical understanding of the fact that they haven't existed forever. Uh, people and wildlife have moved through this landscape for millennia. Um, and it's only in recent decades that we have started restricting that movement, which is often essential to survival and important for diversity. I absolutely encourage everyone all across the country and the world to come and see the beauty of the borderlands here and also experience uh, some of the injustice and the trauma of the borderlands. It's just this stunning contrast of, of total beauty and remoteness um, and trauma and violence which has been inflicted on people who are often crossing our borders uh, just looking for a better life. Actually standing in the shadow of the border wall, actually seeing these, these remote and beautiful places uh, really enhances your understanding and, and adds the, the nuance to these issues that is so missing from the national dialogue. I think that if more Americans really understood what was happening on the border and became invested and engaged, I think there would be more pressure and they wouldn't be able to get away with as much. So I feel like in so many parts of the US, the border is very abstract. And I feel like in Southern Arizona, it's not abstract. It's like a tangible thing and I think it's, it feels much easier to like maybe get people engaged in. The people most affected by these issues are not going to be white people. It's going to be people of color who are most affected. So I think just learning what's going on. If you have resources and if you have a flat platform, finding ways to help shift those to organizations of color and communities of color and people of color. Spending time in an area with your bike and 
and being self-supported in that is the best way to kind of get to know a place. I started traveling down to Mexico and the first time I went down there, people were like, oh, you're gonna get your head cut off and like telling me all these horror stories. And they crossed the border and the only difference was the music was louder. You can't really just believe what everybody's telling you. You have to go ride there and figure it out for yourself. And I've actually never been anywhere in the world where I felt unsafe. I've never been anywhere where people weren't welcoming. I feel like that's kind of opened up like my world to, to possibilities and also to trusting people in general. You know, it's like, you don't have to feel afraid that you're out in the middle of nowhere. You, you kind of like embrace it. It's just in Arizona alone. Mining generates about $4 billion a year. That's significant. Outdoor recreation contributes about $22 billion every year. Now the mining industry has been around longer and they have really high paid lobbyists and they're really good at strategizing and they have lots of political inholdings. The outdoor recreation needs to step up. It doesn't matter if you look at it from a health and wellness standpoint or from economic development. We're one of the most powerful industries that exist. We're bigger than pharmaceuticals, we're bigger than fuel, we're bigger than aerospace, but nobody knows that. Well, what do we do? It has to be a commitment on the part of the outdoor industry and every company that is supported by all of us consumers. We all need to come together and dedicate money toward the preservation of landscapes, period. People just need to know. And if people can know about the issues at hand and then ride through the place, they have the ability to connect the dots. And that like simple connection of the dots, they can articulate when they go back home and talk to their friends about the experience that they have. And so I think it can have like a domino effect of just awareness. And the more people that are aware of it, the more they will pay attention. And the more hopefully the opportunities there are for them to like engage in the change that needs to happen. I think it's one of the most spectacular places to ride a bicycle and I want more people to come down here, but I also want people to understand what's happening. Step up, stand up, speak up. The Santa Rita's are the ground beneath my heart. I spent a lot of time up there. Juntos podemos, together we can. I wish you the very fantastic ride. May the spirit of El Jefe ride with you, and may you take along the memories of the Santa Rita's.